Hey guys, Juan Cloy here. In today's episode of BidX 101, do we want to take a look on potential soldering issues on a BidX? So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we are back again at my desk and I do have a BidX here, which is sadly broken, no longer works, uh, not repairable. This is due to a wrongly used power supply. Uh, the user only used a 12 volt power supply and basically fried almost all of these con components. So let's dive into it. Uh, first of all, a couple of components are not solid on this board and this video here specifically is to explain to you what kind of issues you might face while soldering a bit X and how to resolve them. So I want to show you this and how you can do this. So let's start by going to the back side. And I put in a couple of issues here with, or I sorted on a couple of issues, and I want to try to get you guys to think about it. So pause this video here for a second and f see if you can find the issues. All right, have you done so? Have you identified the issues here on the board? No? Probably you have seen the solder bridge here, right? Let me bring this up close. Yeah, you've seen that? All right. What about the orientation of Q1 and Q2? Seems not right. Hmm? So Q1 and Q2, I soldered on wrongly, and here I built in a solder bridge. And uh, yeah, basically all of the other components are either with no orientation or not on there, or just, uh, yeah, soldered in the correct position on this board. So what do we have here? Obviously Q1 and Q2 is an easy step to resolve the issue. What you would do is you take a look on, let me, let me see that. Uh, let me get my tweezers one second. Here we go. So we do have these tiny dots here, this one and that one. This shows to us that this dot needs to go there and this dot needs to go there. How do you know this? Basically by using such MOSFETs as Q1 and Q2, they do have some sort of an orientation on the bottom side. So if you do take a look, they do have four pins here on this side. Uh, this one here is, by the way, an odd and not so good working uh, MOSFET, but nevertheless, oops, let me get that back here. So you can identify the orientation big pad for smaller pads that have no connection to the big pad. So what you, what I suggest you to do whenever you solder on any of these components that are really big, take a look on the orientation on the back side of them, then take a look on the board. And let me quickly see if I do have, I sadly don't have a board with no Q1, and, oh, there we go. So you take a look on the orientation here, Q1 and Q2. You do see these four pins down here and there are four pins up there. So you do know how to put on this MOSFET here, right? So this orientation that I do have here right now, this would go on Q2 and the other way around would be on Q1. This is the first and easiest step to identify if you sort it on a, an IC in the wrong orientation. With U10 having a couple of solder bridges, it's a little bit more complex. And for that, I want to introduce you to something called a desoldering wick. What a desoldering wick is basically it's a copper thingy, it's a copper string basically. And what you can do is remove U10, use something like a third hand to hold this IC, and then use your heat gun and your tweezers to gently heat up the section that has some soldering bridges and then strive through the legs. Do that and try to remove the solder paste that is not on the correct position. By doing that, obviously you have removed U10 from the board and held by your third hand. You do now have the option of actually removing the excessive solar paste that is not supposed to be on your board. A couple of other soldering issues that you do might face is that you do have U9 soldered on, but for whatever reason, if you do power on X or S, you no longer really can see what, what what kind of voltage is supplied to your ASIC chip. 
And by the way, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, check out the BIDX 101 video that I uploaded previously. This one is about how to identify issues using XOS, so just from the web UI. So U9 is a little bit of a bitch. Let me bring this close up here for you. Let's see. You do see there are five of these small connections. And by the way, U9 is the buck converter that is converting five volts turn to 1.2 volts for the ASIC on the other side here. So if this does have any issues or bridges, uh, you might run into the issue that the ASIC is not working correctly. And here's some sort of a pro tip. Um, and Unfortunately, I need to say, if you are above, I'd say, 45 or 50, you probably won't be able to use this knowledge. But if you do have a solder bridge on U9, it does produce a very, very high noise. So it does have a really high frequency, like a zapping, something like that. And you can hear that. It does have a different sound than the ASIC would do if you do have solar bridges on the ASIC. And I mean, it's just the given fact that if you are about 45 or 50, you do have issues with high frequency noises. So I'm, I'm sorry to say that here, but this is one way to identify if you have any solar bridges on your nine. If you cannot identify it on this manner, then just take a look on this and see if you do see any solar bridges here or on the downside there. If you don't see any solder bridges and U9 is still not outputting the 1.2 volts that you do need to power up your BIDX ASIC tube, then it might be that you don't have enough solder paste on under this or on it. What I usually do then is just remove U9, apply a little bit more solder paste, gently just a little bit, not that much, and then put it back on there. In some scenarios, it has been the case that every single pin except for one got enough solder paste. What I then usually do is I grab my tweezers, I grab a little bit of solder paste and I gently try to push a little bit of solder paste in the appropriate position on the, on the side of U9. Then heat it up again and you will find out the magic of solder paste. It will automatically flow underneath U9 and make a connection. Trust me, it works. I, I did this multiple times. U9 is a bitch. I'm sorry to say that. It is what it is. Uh, but that's one or two kind of tips that I can give you while soldering with U9. A couple other issues that I faced is that U9 and U2. So U9 is a buck converter and U2 is for... I believe uh, the serial commands, I need to look that up, but uh, that both of them do have a really high percentage of just failure. What I'm meaning there is, it's good if you do order yourself a second U9 and a second U2, just for the case of maybe you got one that is not working. Having two that are not working is kind of uh, unlikely, but you never know. I just recommend you, if you do sort of use half a bit eggs, just order a couple more components than what you actually need in case something breaks or you mess something up or whatever, this device is just not working. Just do so, you will thank me later, trust me. All right, another thing, this quartz down here also tends to behave sometimes weird if you do put on too much heat to it. So for you one, I definitely recommend you guys to actually use as little heat as possible. I'm not talking about decreasing the actual heat, so don't go under 350 degrees Celsius that you do use to solder on this device, but don't apply too long heat to it. Just as quick as possible, get it, get it flowed down there and that's it. You don't want to stress things. Most of these things on the board will withstand the pure stress of heat, but these os oscillators like Y1 and U1, I don't know, they, they tend to not like too long heat uh, yeah, usage on them. All right, so with U8, we do have another component that might cause you some issues while soldering this. So U8 is kind of interesting. It does have plenty of legs. Interesting fact about it is these three legs, if you do have a solder bridge on these upper three legs here, don't give a fuck about it. It doesn't matter because these three, these three legs are connected anyway. 
Same applies to these three legs here on the left side. And then on the other legs, they need to be individual. So only if you do have a sort of bridge on these top three or these top three, uh, it doesn't matter. You can just keep it as it is. If you're not sure about it, just go as close as possible to the device and you see traces on the ball. As, as, as you see up here, you do see traces of these balls. And we do see that, that these three are connected and these three are connected, so it doesn't matter. But what could happen is that you do have your U8 and you place it and unfortunately you, pre you applied a little bit too much force on the legs and now you bend them. Now what really comes handy and what I said you should use is a third hand. And as I said, for example, with U10, desoldering the excessive solder paste is a good idea to, to have a third hand. Just clip it in here, maybe use some silicone around it to not damage the IC, then just clip it in there and then try to apply heat and use your desoldering wig to get the solder paste off of it. Same applies to U8. If you do have any issues or you bend it a, a leg, then just clip it into your third hand and gently try to move it or force it back into its original position. It's always better if you try this as slow and with as much patience as you can have in order not to damage these devices. And another thing would be just have another U8. I mean, U8 is not really that complicated. The only thing that is complicated is it has so many legs and you might find the issue that you have bent in one. All right, let's move on to the front side. And here I don't really have to say that much. I mean, uh, all these connections here are really straightforward. The most important here is the ASIC. And for the ASIC, I definitely recommend you guys to get something like a stencil. A stencil is basically just a tool that you apply here and then uh, you, you get a point. You do see, let me, let me put it on here. You do see that uh, I can see these pins underneath and then I can apply the, the solder paste. So a stencil, you do use this for smaller components like these legs of an ASIC or these pins here of an ASIC that you want to apply evenly everywhere. The right amount of solder paste, you just tape the stencil on here and then you scrap over it and then you apply the right amount of solder paste on it. So definitely do that. What I also recommend doing is if you find that you might have used too much solder paste and I do have here this ASIC in front of me which by the way is also broken but nevertheless um, so they are really sticky when it comes to solder paste which is good in general but sometimes it might be that solder paste is sticking in a certain position like as you see here we do see there's a little bit more solder paste on this side than on the other and if you do have a big blob in one section or underneath one section of your ASIC chip you might find out that your ASIC is probably soldered on correctly on the left hand side but now on the right hand side it's it's lifted up in the air and it's not making any connections so what I do recommend here and please listen carefully what you can do is you let it cool down let's say it's now cooled down and then you apply force to press it down and reheat it the important thing here that you need to know is you're allowed to press on it on the naming sides Never ever touch this section here in the middle. If you apply force to this section and you heat it up, 100% you'll break it. Don't do that. Only use it on these two ends here where the namings or the, the number or model numbers written on this die. Never do it on the die chip directly. Otherwise you break it. It then has a crack in the middle and you potentially do see it here might be able to see that here it does have a crack right in the middle it could happen in two different variants the, the first one is that you applied force to it while heating it up and the second one is that you use too much heat it's stupid but it is what it is um, so yeah when you do use or then you do solder on the AC chip be as well really really careful and uh, then everything should work I do hope that I now explain to you the most common issues while soldering on the BIDX and I do hope that you find this video informational. 
If you did so, I highly suggest you guys to subscribe to this channel so don't miss out on any further videos and give me a thumbs up so that I do know that you enjoy this content and I'll produce more of it. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.